morning. I'd like to start the ceremony and call Captain Jude Lambert to ring the bell five, three times, five bell three times to start the ceremony. Thank you, Captain Lambert. Chief Suarez, Mayor Di Natale, Mr. Jeff Wynn, Pastor Pendleton, City Councilors, family and friends of the Fitchburg Fire Department, and most important members of the Fitchburg Fire Department, welcome to this year's Firefighter Memorial Sunday, a day we recognize our past and present members who give so much to this great city and our citizens. Our firefighters are amongst the busiest in the Commonwealth, and in my opinion, are the toughest and most aggressive. Fitchburg firefighters over the years have faced many adversities, company cuts, reduction in manpower, layoffs, but never, ever has there been a reduction in services to our citizens or the city. Our firefighters are now dealing with the cancer epidemic and many other ailments coming, stemming from our job. Our firefighters still love the job and are amongst the best in the city. We still make house calls today. Today we honor the nine firefighters who died in the line of duty and the members on the wall who gave a career to the people of Fitchburg. I can't thank you enough for being a part of our ceremony. Before we get going, we have a special award that we'd like to, we'd like to mention. Uh, if I could have the mayor and the chief come up, please. We have EMT advanced Kendall Smith, who's uh, assigned to our paramedic one. Is she, is she here? Kendall, can you come up for a sec? Yes. Before we get going, uh, Fitch, Kendall Smith is an employee of Fitchburg EMS who has worked for us for five plus years. Miss Kendall Smith, who was assigned to paramedic one out of Central Station, will be leaving us because she has been accepted to medical school to become a doctor. She'll be attending the University of New England and majoring in osteopathic medicine. Her parents, Hope and Brian, are here, and we wish her all the best. Congrats, Kendall, and thank you for the service to the city of Fitchburg. We'll now have the opening prayer by Charles W. Pendleton, Jr. Let's pray. Almighty God, Supreme Chief of the Universe, as we gather together today, we humbly bow before your sovereign will. Today we remember that in your divine providence, you have seen fit to call some of our brothers and sisters home. Their higher calling completed, their earthly careers ended. We gather today to remember the many who have gone before us, those who forged the way for the service of the brave men and women who succeed them now, and who have gathered here to remember and honor those who have stepped into eternity. Today, Lord, we will call out one by one the names of our brothers and sisters who have faithfully discharged their duty, some even offering the supreme sacrifice in their service to others while flames were raging, and we will solemnly sound the bell in their memory and in their honor. Father, you know how much we cherish their memories in our hearts and how deeply we feel their absence. Nothing can make up 
for the absence of our brothers and sisters who live and work with us, and it would be wrong to even try to do so. We recognize, Father, that thinking of those brave men and women who have gone before us can leave our hearts aching and our spirits darkened. However, by faith, even in the darkest of our night, we know that the light of your presence can scatter the darkness. We know, O oh God, that you are our shepherd, our good shepherd, and that there is nothing that we need be wanting, knowing that when we are tired and weary, you desire to lead us in fresh and green pastures and beside the still waters that restore our dark and drooping spirits. We know, Heavenly Father, that as you guide us along right paths, true to your nature, that you desire to walk with us even in the deep, dark valley of death while not being overcome by it. We look to you now, Father, to console the families and relatives bereaved of those our fallen comrades. Console us, too, for we also feel the weight of their departure. Console us in our sorrow. Be with us as we remember, Lord. All this we ask in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and King. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. We'll now have remarks by Fitchburg Mayor Stephen DiNatale. You know, before I begin my words, I want to say a, a, a heartfelt thank you from all of the citizens of Fitchburg to the Fitchburg Fire Department and the way they take care of this space. Let's have a round of applause. It's beautiful. Absolutely magnificent. Thank you. Good morning, Chief Suarez, Deputy Chiefs, Captains, Lieutenants, Firefighters, City Councils, and Families. As Mayor of the City, I'm honored to be given the opportunity to say a few words at Fitchburg's annual Firefighters Memorial Service. Today we gather with family and friends in observance of our firefighters with special gratitude to those who have lost their lives for the safety and protection of this community and in respect to the survivors of our fallen heroes. When I was state representative, I was, I was privileged to watch the Massachusetts State Firefighters Memorial Park be constructed and completed at the State House. And in September 11, 2007, it was dedicated to all of the Commonwealth's firefighters who have lost their lives for the safety and protection of others. This is how important it is, not just the city of Fitchburg, but the entire Commonwealth and, quite frankly, the entire nation. As mayor of our great city, I recognize the importance of working in a collaborative manner with all city departments. The importance of working as a team with all city departments that takes on added importance when one considers our fire department. Prior to my mayoral administration, the Fitchburg Fire Department was not meeting the National Fire Protection Association's minimum staffing level required for the city of Fitchburg. With prudent, sound budgetary practices, my administration was able to meet the NFPA minimum staffing levels required. And these standards continue to change over time. This administration remains committed to ensuring an adequately staffed Fitchburg Fire Department that will best protect the residents of the city of Fitchburg and its firefighters. During my administration, major investments have been made in the Fitchburg Fire Department to address multiple needs in property, plant, and equipment. Approximately $2.8 million of available funds have been appropriated to the Fitchburg Fire Department, most notably for such items as Jaws of Life rescue equipment, new turnout gear, new pumper truck, repaving driveways at all three stations, replacement of support vehicles, replacement of SCBA compressors, and last but certainly not least, the recent investment of $1.4 million for a new ladder truck that is in production and we eagerly await its arrival. My thanks also to the Fitchburg City Council for their willingness to, to, to see how important this was. My administration will continue to address and prioritize needs within our fire department as funds become available. 
Through ongoing training, Fitchburg firefighters are challenged to be better prepared to perform their duties at any given moment. Dedication and commitment increase the department's efforts to reduce deaths, injuries, and property losses from fire. Thank you for this commitment. Today, I want to thank all of Fitchburg firefighters and our emergency services personnel who's retired, those retired and those that have passed on, who by their faithful and loyal devotion to duties have rendered invaluable service to our community and its citizens. This Fitchburg Firefighters Memorial Service is of major importance and for decades to come, may, may this monument and memorial service help this community remember all our firefighters who have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to this great city. Thank you and God bless the city of Fitchburg. Thank you, Mayor. We'll now have remarks by Chief of Department Dante Suarez. Thank you, PJ, Mayor Di Natale, Representative Kuchmerick, Fire Academy Director Jeffrey Wynn, elected officials, and especially family and friends of our past and present firefighters. Good morning and welcome to our 72nd annual Memorial Sunday, a day that we set aside each year to honor our past firefighters and to salute our present firefighters for their accomplishments over the past year. Before I move on, I would like to take a moment to congratulate Mr. Wynn on his newly appointed position as Fire Academy Director. That's a great accomplishment, and the Fitchburg Fire Department looks forward to working with him in the Fire Mass Academy in the future. Our role of departed members now has 267 names, with the recent passing of retired firefighter Michael K. Connery and active member Martin J. Kukula. Michael K. Connery worked Group 2 Latitude and was appointed August 21st, 1978, retired September 12th, 2003, and sadly passed away on March 28th, 2023. Firefighter of the Year recipient Martin J. Kukla worked Group 3 Engine 2. Marty was appointed April 19th, 1988, and sadly passed away as an active member on January 31st, 2023. I was fortunate enough to have worked with both Mike and Marty. Both were devoted firefighters that placed the public in the job before themselves. And this is one of the many reasons why they were so highly respected by their coworkers then and why they are still loved and respected today. So at this point, I'd like to share a couple of short stories about each. First was Marty. I regarded Marty as one of the hardest workers I've ever known. Uh, case in point is sadly when the day came that Marty could no longer do his job at the Fitchburg Fire Department while he was battling ALS. I was up in my office one day and I hear Marty's voice coming over the radio and obviously months before, Marty wasn't supposed to be working anymore. So I kind of brushed it off that maybe I didn't hear right. Uh, a little while later, I hear Marty's voice again. So now I have to go and investigate. So I leave my office, walk down to the alarm room, open the door, and there's Marty in plain clothes in his wheelchair, rolled up to the dispatch console, dispatching for the Fitchburg Fire Department. I turned to Marty and I said, hey, Marty. I said, what's going on? He's like, hey, Chief, nothing bad. He goes, uh, I was going nuts just staying at home. So I had Renee drop me off while she was going to go do the food shopping for a couple hours and just thought I'd come in here and just dispatch for a bit, if you don't mind. I said, Marty, knock yourself out. Have fun. We could always use another dispatcher. But that was Marty, always willing to work, always willing to give that extra hand. For those of you who don't know, my brother Eddie was also a Fitchburg firefighter and who also passed away as an active member of the department almost three years ago after a long battle with cancer, occupational cancer. Eddie and Mike Connery worked together at Oak Hill on Ladder 2. They worked together for many years. They got along great and they were very similar people. They both had a quit wit and both had an incredible sense of humor. The day that I heard the sad news of Mike Connery passing, a story quickly came to mind and it involved Eddie and Mike. It's a story that happened one day after Eddie had an operation due to his illness and I was by his bedside along with a big group of firefighters and we're all sitting there talking. Eddie sedated in his bed 
And one of the firefighters starts to say how he met Conry, saw Conry early in the week, and Conry told him the news that he had won a million dollar scratch ticket. So the firefighter says to congratulates Mike and says to him, um, wow, you must be really excited. You won a million dollars. And Mike turns to him and says, yeah, it was exciting. He says, but, you know, I just wish I would have won it 20 years earlier. It would have been so much better if I just won it 20 years earlier. Um, Eddie's in bed, out. All of a sudden, he just rises for a quick second, looks around and says, you know, leave it to a firefighter to win a million dollars and find some way to complain about it. <laughs> and right back out. So I, I, the next time I saw... The next time I saw Mike Connery, I shared that story. Mike Connery got a big, big laugh about it. Um, of course, he gave me some choice words to share with my brother, Eddie, which is a story for another time. Um, but he really, really loved it. So as I look out to all the firefighters here today, I hope that you can all take comfort in these stories, knowing that all of your accomplishments and all of your stories will be passed along by future firefighters and that your legacy will continue on just as Mike and Marty's legacy will continue. Today is also a day we see many of our retired firefighters who come to pay tribute to their past co-workers. And during the past year, we saw three firefighters join the retired ranks. They are Firefighter Randy Dowdy, Group 2, Engine 4. Randy retired on January 15th, 2023, after 33 years of service. Fire Inspector Mike Torres, Mike retired on February 5th, 2023, after 32 years of service. And last, Deputy Chief Greg Normandon, Group 4 Shift Commander, retired on January 15th, 2023, after 37 years of service. We wish them a long, happy, and healthy retirement. Congratulations. During the course of this past year, we've also had two promotions. They are Yona Vaughn, went from private to lieutenant, and Patrick Havity from lieutenant to captain. Congratulations to you, and many thanks to your families for supporting your careers. Congratulations. Now we'd like to call up Mayor Dean Natale and Representative Kuzmerich so they can assist me in recognizing the following two firefighters for 20 years of service. These firefighters have earned the Massachusetts Service Award pin in citation for 20 years of service. The first fire, excuse me, the first firefighter is firefighter Jonathan Dickout with 20 year award. Unfortunately, he could not be here today, uh, but we do congratulate him. And secondly is firefighter Frank Robles III. Hey, Frank, if you could come up to receive your award. So congratulations to both of those firefighters. It's a great achievement. In closing, I would like to thank... In closing, I would like to thank everyone here once again for attending today's ceremony. But before I go, I would also like to convey to all the elected officials here today and to the citizens of Fitchburg the commitment, passion, and the love these firefighters have for their city its residents in, the, in their profession. I'd also like to bring to attention all of their performances and accomplishments over the last year. The men and women of the Fitchburg Fire Department in the last 12 months have responded to 11,900, excuse me, 11,398 calls, including 95 building fires, which resulted in saving multiple lives and saving approximately 54 million $253,381 worth of property and contents. That money goes to about approximately over a million dollars in revenue that these people, the firefighters before us, have saved the city this year. 
They also responded to 61 mutual aid building fires, assisting our neighboring communities just as they assist us year in and year out. That total also includes 7,654 ambulance calls, 418 motor vehicle accidents, 35 hazmat incidents, 29 car fires, and the jaws of life used seven times, just to name a few. I do want to add that these numbers are continuous, continuously on the rise, so this coming year will surely be busier than the last. And I'm proud to call these to work with them because they're always at the ready and are always willing to answer any emergency that is dispatched by our alarm room, regardless of its danger and its size. So ladies and gentlemen of the Fitchburg Fire Department, I'm sure I speak for everyone here when I say you deserve a round of applause for the professionalism, dedication that you have given us this past year. For your service, your hard work, and your dedication. Congratulations. And in closing, I just once again want to thank everybody here that's in attendance. Thank you all for your time and enjoy this beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. We'll now have our guest speaker, Mr. Jeffrey Wynn, the new director of the Massachusetts Fire Academy. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, that's a tough act to follow, Chief. So Mayor Dinatelli, members of the city council, other elected and appointed officials, Chief Suarez, other chief officers, Captain Roy and other company officers, members and family of the Fitchburg Fire Department, and ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Jeff Wynn. I am the director of the Mass Fire Academy, and I'm truly honored to be here on this momentous day, the second Saturday of the month of June of 2023, where both the Commonwealth and the city of Fitchburg pays homage to the brave individuals who have served faithfully in the past and present. An important day, perhaps the most important day of the year for the Fitchburg Fire Department, where we honor the nine line of duty deaths and everyone else that's on the wall and they're remembered. The death of these heroes and their service to the community can never be repaid, but they have earned our undying gratitude It will never forget their sacrifices. You may notice that I'm not wearing a uniform. I'm not a sworn and badge member of a fire department. I do have strong family ties to the fire service. My father is a retired district chief from the western part of the state. My brother is an active chief in the eastern part of the state. My younger brother, and believe it or not, even my mom spent some time in uniform serving the community uh, as a firefighter. I did a few years as a call firefighter, not many, but until the military commitment called me away. I'm a retired member of the military with over 34 years of service, having enlisted at age 17 and going from Private E1 to Colonel 06. Kind of got a little nostalgic marching up the hill today in formation. It's the first time I've done that in probably 10 years. It was nice. The ideals of the fire service and the military are shared and go hand in hand. These ideals have words, and these words have meaning. Words like honor, professionalism, duty, dedication, tradition, pride, ceremony, integrity, respect, and personal courage. Both professions are more than a job to most people, and I don't need to tell you this, that it's a calling, it's a vocation, it's a way of life, it's a brother and sisterhood, it's a family. Of course, like any families, we have our ups and downs, our tragedies and accomplishments, our loyalties, our dysfunctions, and our love for each other and the willingness above all else to do anything for a fellow brother or sister. We try to plant that seed early at the Mass Firefighting Academy. Our recruits start on Recruit Firefighter Orientation Day called RFO. This is conducted six weeks before the 10-week recruit class begins. Our instructors plant the seeds of success in the recruits, and we like to think we give them the tools academically, physically and mentally to start preparing them for the rigors of a firefighter life. We welcome them in on RFO, reminding them what they may already know, that they've won the lottery, the Powerball, the big door prize, whatever you want to call it, with their acceptance into this vocation. The recruits come back six weeks later to begin their 50-day, 10-week program that is more than just firefighter skills. It includes academics, functional fitness, physical training, pride, professionalism, and tradition. Each day, an honor guard of recruits raises the national colors to start the day in the drill yard, and at the end, lowers the colors in a solemn and respectful ceremony. A favorite class for many recruits, probably because they're not on the drill ground in the heat, is the, uh, is the last week of training where the history and traditions of the fire service are discussed in a formal lecture. These seeds are planted, and they're ready to grow upon return to the communities. This August, we'll get back to the pre-pandemic class sizes at Stowe, 
when we restart with 36 recruits per academy class at Stowe. Meanwhile, our campuses at Springfield and Bridgewater continue to graduate exceptional recruits as well. Just Friday, 30 recruits graduated from the Springfield campus, and next week on Friday, another 24 from Bridgewater. Annually, starting this summer, we'll be graduating about 600 recruits a year uh, just from the recruit programs, never mind all the offerings we have at the Mass Firefighting Academy. And this was a shameless plug, but in, in uh, calendar year 22, we had almost over 14,000 course completions by students from recruit all the way up to chief officers with over 650 class offerings, including our call of all program, in-person deliveries, muni hires, distance learning classes, et cetera. So kind of a good deal. And we look to expand upon that number in, in this calendar year. I'm sure Fitchburg, like many communities, is experiencing the struggles with recruitment in all aspects. To that end, we're trying a couple new approaches, working with high schools, the Votex, Scout Explorer and Cadet programs, diversity, equity, inclusion, inroads, et cetera, to increase awareness of the fire service and to plant those seeds at an earlier age. Captain Roy brought this up, and I'm glad we didn't have a chance to re rehearse our uh, presentations together, but I'd like to take a minute to discuss a good news story about the cancer programs at MFA. We offer three-hour National Firefighter Cancer Support Network training, either locally at your firehouse or virtually. We're the only state fire academy in the country, the only one in the country, offering free cancer screenings to any interested firefighter that meets the criteria. Offerings include free CT scans, free PSA blood tests, free skin cancer screenings. And if a firefighter doesn't meet the criteria, which is incredibly rare, they can be screened and self-pay using our reduced rate at one of our approved vendors. Our team has a network of dermatologists and other support folks who graciously donate their time and knowledge free, and we can't thank them enough. Early detections are key and incredibly important. This year, almost 4,000 firefighters were screened across the Commonwealth at about 182 different events. Of note, out of those 4,000, 668 firefighters were identified as needing a follow-up. That's 17% of the population. The national average is 10%. The so what of the 668 firefighters that had an earlier detection, were they able to identify an issue before it became a bigger issue? The more earlier detected, the chance of success for treatment rises exponentially. The cancer team was at the Heroes Cup this weekend in Marlboro spreading the message. For those that don't know, the Heroes Cup is a weekend ice hockey tournament for fire, police, EMS, and military members. Next year, the team will be at the, uh, next week, the team will be at the PFFM concert in Worcester with a booth as well. At both events, it's not just about spreading the words with a booth for the program, but actually screening firefighters, again, foot stomp for free at each location. I stopped by on Saturday about noontime, and they had already screened 80 people by noontime. And I'm really happy to report that a request for proposal has gone out to bid for a mobile screening unit. This adds to our program's capability. This mobile unit will be able to pull up to a firehouse into an apparatus bay, be completely self-contained, and add to the existing repertoire uh, we already offer, and now be able to provide mammograms, portable CTs in the field, and ultrasounds, thus greatly expanding our capability to get to these cancers that are so prevalent in the fire service so much earlier. And sign up again, it's free and it's easy. In closing, the respect and admiration we give our, fire, our fallen pay tribute to their memories and the lives they lived. We do so by having days like today, visiting gravesides, placing flags, wreaths, or other mementos at memorials in our communities. To truly honor their lives, we must share the stories with others and ensure their memory, memories live on. A poignant thought on a day like today comes from General George Patton during World War II at a memorial event he attended. And it takes a little bit of explaining, because on the surface it sounded cold, but that's not how he meant it. Paraphrasing, he said, it is foolish and wrong to mourn our dead. Rather, we should thank God that such people lived. This ruffled some feathers when he spoke it, but what he was trying to explain, in my opinion, or convey, was that, of course, we should mourn our loved ones. They're never forgotten. But at a time like this, when we get together as a community, it shouldn't be just about sadness or mournfulness. It should be like Chief Sora's story. Respectful, yes. Honorful, yes. But also, we should thank God that heroes like this existed and we should celebrate their lives and their accomplishments and remember them proudly. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for this honor. I'll never forget it. God bless the city. May God bless the firefighters and their families of the Fitchburg Fire Department. Stay safe, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll now have a selection by the Westford Fire Department Pipes and Drums.
We will now have the closing prayer by Charles W. Pendleton, Jr. Let's pray. Father God, as we leave this place today, we thank you for the joy, remembering those who have gone before us, the joy that it puts in our hearts and minds. We would be remiss not to seek your blessing upon us as we depart. So we humbly ask that you would protect our active firefighters, men and women who daily face hazards in the performance of their duties, protecting our citizens from the devastating ravages of fire and as they lend a helping hand during our most difficult days. We ask that you would preserve them in their earthly tasks and in the day of their own last alarm. We thank you for your servants, these brave firefighters, for their selfless, untiring duty. We thank you for the gift they are to us each day. O oh God, by faith we believe you have prepared a banquet for our fallen comrades in the sight of all who do not understand their doings. We believe that in your mercy and love you will anoint us with oil, that our cups will be overflowing with mercy and with grace. We ask that you would increase our faith, that your goodness and your mercy would follow us all the days of our lives. And now, O oh Lord, God of power and might in heaven and on earth, may we be full of your glory both now and forevermore. Bless all who have witnessed this memorial in honor of those we are about to name. Help us in our aspiration to be like those who've gone before us. To that end, help us to be selfless and honorable in the performance of our duties. All honor, praise, and glory be to God, our God, both now and forevermore. Amen. Before I read the role of departed members, I would like to ask a favor of all the retired firefighters. At the conclusion of the ceremony, we ask that uh, you guys come up and take a picture in front of the monument, if, if you could, if you have a few minutes. Rafael F. Adoricio, Vaco W. Ajo, Waldemir W. Ajo, Willard L. Atchison, Ralph Allen, Joseph D. Anderson, Napoleon L. Anderson, Adolph Babineau, Anthony A. Balducci, Patrick H. Barnacle, William F. Barrett, Jr., George W. Battles, Alexander G. Bean, Alexander G. Bean, Jr., Herbert H. Beard, George Beausoleil, John B. Beavis, Raul Badad, Kelvin A. Beer, Kelvin R. Beer, John C. Beglin, James V. Bellavo, William Burnt, Paul J. Boyvin, Eli J. Boucher, Edward P. Boudreau, Jr., Roger Ray Boudreau, Roger Ron Boudreau, Clifford G. Bowers, Holland K. Brooks, Marion M. Brooks, James J. Buckley, Jr., Robert E. Buckley, Edmund T. Burke, William F. Burke, Cyril T. Burns, Patrick C. Cahill, Andrew J. Calamari, Andrew J. Calamari, Jr., Leo F. Calamari, Patrick P. Calamari, Alfred C. Cowett, Ernest C. Cowett, Thomas J. Cowett, Alexander L. Castelli, John T. Citrino, Archie S. Childs, Charles G. Christian, James Christie, Samuel J. Ciccone, Jerry B. Coates, Phineas W. Coleman, Ernest J. Congram, Herbert L. Connors, James A. Connors, Michael K. Conry, Thomas L. Conroy, Thomas J. Conry, A. Joseph Corder, Alfred W. Cormier, George J. Cormier, Hervey C. Cormier, Joseph A. Cormier, Robert Cormier, John P. Costello, Ernest J. Cody, Francis E. Cody, Ernest A. G. Cox, Bernard Crosby, Edward H. Croson, Joseph W. Cullen, Philip Curtis, James J. Daly, Thomas A. Dadio Sr., Antonel J. Delisle, Norman F. Delisle, Richard R. Dejean, 
John R. Donahue, Paul N. Drapanis, Santo J. DeSalvo, John W. Emanuelson, Richard P. Espy, Frank E. Farrell, John W. Farwell, Ivor H. Fosher, Edward O. Fenton, William F. Fenton, Nelson I. Ferguson, Francis E. Fisher, George B. Fisher, George C. Fisher, Henry E. Fisher, Fred P. A. Fleckner, Norman Fleckner, James N. Fogarty, James W. Fogarty, Henry F. Fogarty, Chauncey D. Ford, Paul W. Forsman, Duncan B. Frazier, Walter A. Freeman, George L. Frazier, Archie A. Gaudet, Ralph W. Gay, Richard Gay, Vito S. Durante, Samuel P. Junta, Francis M. Greer, John J. Greer, Robert A. Grevy, Charles W. Grinnell, Joseph E. Guilford, Berta C. Hale, William H. Hale, George H. Hallman, Christopher A. Havity, Joseph C. Havity, Francis J. Hawthorne, Joseph R. Hawthorne, John E. Healy, James J. Hennessy, Robert C. Hickey, Walter G. Hollows, Henry J. Hyatt, Henry C. Jarvis, Philip E. Jarvis, George F. Jeffs, Wayne O. Johnson, James P. Jordan, Walter P. Jordan, William H. Jordan, Michael W. Candianus, Georgie B. Kane, George H. Kendall, James R. Kennedy, Hale G. Kenny, Ronald H. King, John J. Kittredge, Edward J. Kukla, Martin J. Kukla, Lester S. Lackey, Armin Lamoth, Olive I. I. Lampy, Anthony F. Lavoie, Lester J. LeBlanc, Louis J. LeBlanc, James A. Leckie, Robert C. Ledger, Joseph C. Ledger, James P. Leakis, William J. Leonard, Malcolm W. Lilly, Joseph M. Lynch, Richard E. Lyons, Ray B. McCracken, Jadius Millett, Toivo Mackey, Edward F. Malone, Jr., Joseph G. Mallowan, Michael S. Mancuso, Henry N. Marshall, George W. Marston, William W. Marston, Walter E. Marston, Walter E. Matson, Thomas May, Edmund R. Mayo, Peter McCollum, Ray McGrath, Donald McGurl, David P. McGurn, Henry E. McInerney, Ignatius McInerney, Michael J. McNamara, Kevin B. McWilliams, William A. Melanson, George H. Miller, Raymond E. Moran, Jeremiah J. Moriarty, James Morley, John F. Mulcahy, Richard D. Malloy, Robert C. Murchie, John F. Murnane, Timothy F. Murnane, Michael K. Murphy, William B. Murphy, William T. Murphy, Philip F. Nason, George Newcomb, William Newcomb Jr., Harris P. Nicodus, Louis P. Nicodus, Marinus P. Nicodus, John Nicola, Frank H. Noonan, Joseph R. Normden, M. Vincent O'Connell, John J. O'Connor, Michael E. O'Connor, John F. O'Donnell, Michael Orlando, Emmanuel Pagnotto, Clifton W. Patch, Nazarino J. Pellegrini, Lionel Pirido, Richard H. Phelps, Cleo Pimarini, Raymond Poisson, Solomon Poland, Alexander R. Panuski, Leo A.J. Preventure, John J. Raymond, Valentin Ramos, John W. Rand, Arthur K. Ray, Thomas A. Riley, Charles J. Rivers, Harry J. Roberts, Michael Rabuccio, Anthony Romano, Paul R. Ruiz, James V. Roy, Vern E. Roy, Thomas E. Rude, Walter T. Sanavita, Ernest Sonia, Toivo Savala, John G. Schwarzel, John H. Shea, John J. Shea, Michael J. Shea, T. Harold Shea, Thomas J. Shea, Timothy J. Shea, Fred R. Syatt, Harold A. S. Slade, Norman A. Slade, Ernest A. Slattery, Edward A. Stanton, Edward F. Suarez, Francis A. Sullivan, Francis L. Sullivan, Jeremiah B. Sullivan, Joseph E. Sullivan, Walter G. Sullaway, Richard Taft, Angelo L. Tasca, Jerry A. Testagrossa, Thomas J. Tannen Sr., Thomas J. Tannen Jr., Frank, G. Frank D. Tusha, Harry F. Tuttle, Robert J. Toomley, Gary A. Valancourt, Eric M. Wallman, Henry H. Wheelock, Bernard Whittemore, Donald R. Wheedler, Leo F. White, Arthur E. Winters, Charles E. Woods, Ernest A. Woods, John E. Woods, William J. Woods, 
Ralph S. Woolacott, Edward H. Yapshin, William K. Younglove, Nicola L. Zakelli, Michael A. Zakelli. We are very honored today to have the Kukula family and Miss Trisha Conry that are going to assist us in placing the wreath. I would ask two firefighters to assist them to the wreath. This concludes our ceremony, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the monument committee of firefighters and retired firefighters who continually do work to make the monument look so good. Retired Chief Kevin D. Roy, Lieutenant Chris Millett, Captain Richard M. Jollymore, retired, L retired Lieutenant Richard A. Libatori, Firefighter Philip D. Jordan, retired, and Firefighter Matt Glennie. They do a tremendous job and they're always up here doing stuff to make the monument to upkeep. And we'd also like to thank Dave Brooks who does the, the work here at, at our monument. Uh, he, he does contemporary design, does a phenomenal job. If we could give them a round of applause. I'd also uh, like to thank uh, firefighter Bill Burke who I started helping Billy set up for this and plan for it in 1991, I think. And uh, he's been with me ever since. He's been retired 20 years now. And uh, he still shows up, still gives me a hand. We still make sure everything's uh, squared away. So if we could give Billy a hand, too. Yeah. Uh, we will be marching back to Central for some light refreshments. Um, I will remind people now that Boulder Drive, we're going to go down. It's two ways. So we got to hug the right, hug the right side um, as we go back down because there's going to be cars coming at us. Okay, um, I would like to have firefighter Alec Dement, the junior most firefighter, come up to close out the ceremony. He will ring the bell two times um, to close the ceremony. This concludes our ceremony, and uh, in a moment we'll be forming up over here 
and uh, we'll march back to Central for some light refreshments. Thank you all for coming. Uh, it was a great, great day and a great ceremony to honor our fallen. Thank you.